Coming up today on YOLO Texas. It's early, it's beautiful, and one of the best things about El Paso, the Franklin Mountain Range. That looks great, Gene. Yes! That brisket looks gorgeous. This is my first time in Lubbock, and I am in awe of this beautiful restaurant. Join us on our trip across Texas. Welcome to the Plaza Hotel at Pioneer Park. Is this your first time in El Paso? It is. So let me tell you a little bit about the hotel. We originally opened in 1930s. It was one of Conrad Hilton's first Skyrise hotels. So we do recommend our signature restaurant, Ambad. Also, if you do like tequila, we have over 800 selections. And we also have our rooftop terrace bar, La Perla. I'm so excited to be here. Well, we're happy to have you. And we do have you staying in one of our landmark suites. The design of this place is top notch. We are uh, situated at the westernmost tip of the state. We are on the border of New Mexico and Mexico. We're about 850,000 strong and a very hospitable and welcoming community. Thank you for having us here in El Paso. I heard that y'all do Texas differently. Many visitors come through and, and they say, oh, we've been to Texas, but not quite like here. We're uh, in the high desert, and so even the terrain is different. We're in a oh, different yeah. time zone. Yeah. We are called the Sun City, so this, this nice warm vitamin D that we're soaking up allows us to enjoy uh, great year-round activities, and uh, we have more than 315 days of sun. So when we say we do it different, we really do. I'm so excited to be here. So what are your rec recommendations for, for me? So Franklin Mountains has to be on your to-do list. We are the only Texas city with a mountain, and lucky for us, it's right in the middle of the community. I know, it's like, it's your backyard, basically. It's, it's the largest urban park in the country. So I have to tell you, our Mexican food is second to none. Okay. And uh, okay. this is authentic Mexican food. You have some world-class murals we here. We do, they were just featured in the New York Times. This is a community that in, encourages artists to, to come out um, and uh, really uh, provide some vibrancy to the community. We've got a great region that offers a lot. I love this, I'm falling in love with El Paso. I love that, I love that. That's, that was our plan the whole time. We have our green sauce uh, enchiladas uh, with chicken. That is uh, one of our signature plates. We do not puree our sauce. We use our Anaheim peppers that are grown uh, regionally, chop them up to a certain size, and we make this sauce a basis for a lot of our plates. This is amazing. Good, Oh good. my gosh. I'm going to eat this entire plate. I don't care what anybody says. I love our green chilies. Tell me what it's been like over the years seeing the restaurant grow and, and just being a staple here in El Paso. This actually right here where we're sitting was the original main dining room. Over here in this room, this was actually our kitchen. This other room that's over here in this area, it's um, what we call Tony's room, which is an homage towards my great grandfather, my dad's grandfather, okay. who's the founder of Alan Jay. And when he founded it, it was actually known as Tony's Place. Okay. And then they changed the name over in 1968, and that's going to be under my grandparents' place, names, uh, Lilian John, which is my dad's mom and dad. I was going to ask who were Alan Jay. <laughs> Lillian John. When I was reading, it said there, there were like slot machines and it was open during Prohibition. And so like, yes. that's super cool. It's, there's so much history in this building. There's so much history, colorful history at that. And if only walls could speak, what, what stories would we hear? People love y'all. We attribute it to not only our longevity here, but also our staff. I mean, we do have an incredible staff, an incredible workforce. Tell me a little bit about the cemetery that's across the street, because everybody has been like, oh, it's by the cemetery. Like, what, is the cemetery famous? It is, but uh, we have John Wesley Hardin in there. 
famous gunslinger, and uh, just a lot of notables that were early settlers and founders of El Paso that are buried here. Y'all are all have been so amazing to us. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it, and I, I'm not gonna cry, but like there's a lot going on in here, and I love it. Restaurants are the cornerstone. They're the fabric of every community. I can't wait to come back and see how much more it's grown. I've got plans. Got plans? I mean, well, I've already made a huge dent in these enchiladas, and well, I'm going to continue you're eating. Good. I know, I know. You're, They're we're, you're so leaving us good. behind. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you all again. Good morning, y'all. It's early, it's beautiful, and one of the best things about El Paso, the Franklin Mountain Range. This is uh, the new, brand new visitor center. It's we beautiful. Just... I love this right here in front of me, in front of us. Yeah, this is Franklin Mountain Range that is at, at a scale. It was created to help visitors orient themselves around the park. The park, almost 27,000 acres, and it goes from almost downtown El Paso, and it encompasses almost the entire mountain range all the way to the state line with New Mexico. We, we have different exhibits that when visitors come, they start like learning about the history of the, of the mountains, about the Chihuahuan Desert. Being the superintendent here, What's your favorite part about the park? It is very rewarding when people come and then start enjoying and, and then coming back because they found that this place gives them quality of life and makes them happy. And at the end of the day, it's, it's about making people happy. Well, I think we have an adventure ahead of us, right? Yes, so I hope you brought your water. Oh, I did, I did. Hiking shoes? Yes. And uh, we're, we're ready. We have over 130 miles of trails in the park. So we're climbing to those uh, caves. The name Aztec Caves is kind of funny because uh, back in the early 1900s, somebody found um, pottery shards. Oh, wow. And archeologists back then didn't know much about the local cultures of Northern Mexico. So when they found it, they pretty much say like, oh, it must, it must have been from, from the Aztecs. Aztecs. Wow, absolutely beautiful, breathtaking. Can you imagine all the stories that are in here? Yeah, just, I mean, if, if the rocks could talk. This is amazing. Thank you so much for showing this to yeah, us. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's my pleasure. Coming up next, we pour our heart into the art. Don't go anywhere. Jeannie, my favorite part about this place is as soon as you walk in, you're just met with this, this warmth, vibrant, beautiful environment. How did you first get started with your own studio? Thank you for that. And well, I love art, I love people, I love color, obviously. And I think bringing the three things together really culminated into my studio. Art means so many different things to different people. Yes. What is the role that art has played in your life? So art is, for me, it's, it started out as what I have on my door, and it's, I, I have creating art for the broken pieces. So many years ago, um, I lost my first husband, and um, that's kind of got me into it. I'm very happily married, I have a beautiful family now, but for me it was therapy. I found who I was again, a little bit. You know, I'm that mom, I'm that wife, I'm all those things. But it really, it really took on a different role for me. And then to be able to not just experience that for yourself and, yes. and, and find so much in you again through art, but then to be able to turn around and share that I with love, everyone. I love it. Everybody has a story. Everybody. I, I just, I love the celebration of life through art. And I love watching people get so excited about what they're making. 
I love to see them invest. We can have someone sign up for a class, which happens a lot, and they come by themselves, and they'll bring maybe something their mother had made, or maybe something that belonged to a relative that had broken, and it's very special to them, and they want to incorporate it in, in a glass art piece that they want to make. Or I had a couple come in for their anniversary. This is beautiful. They came in, just them, they worked on a large piece, and they threw dishes at their wedding, and they it was their 25th wedding anniversary. So they incorporated that into a piece they worked on together for their anniversary. And then they went to lunch. I thought it was really cute. Well, Jeannie, fair warning. I, my artistic ability is not something that I would say is, is um, top of my characteristics. You're the perfect person to be here. First, can I tell you, you don't have to be an artist to walk in our door. That's good. So, yes, <laughs> that's you really don't good to know. <laughs> have to know anything. If you know how to pick up a hammer in our safe little glass breaking block box and smash glass, you can create anything beautiful. So, um, what we do is we work with glass, we work with acrylics, and we work with resin. And basically, under that, the world is our oyster. Well, I can't wait to get started. Let's, right. let's go celebrate art. Yay, let's do it. <laughs>
but they go about eight or nine hours just in the smoke, not wrapped or anything, and then we wrap them up in uh, butcher paper. Okay. And they go another four or five hours until they're done. Nice. There's no time on how long a brisket takes to cook. It's all by feel and just when they're ready. Oh my gosh. You ready to go eat? Ready to go eat. All right, let's do this. Our barbecue is right here in front of us, yeah. so where shall we start? Our turkey is pretty phenomenal. Okay. We've got a lot of food here, oh, I so know. <laughs> let's just go with sample sizes and then you can come back okay. for more. Go ahead and give that a try and I'll All get right. you a slice of brisket. All righty, let's try this turkey. See how you like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. our turkey is pretty darn good. My yeah. goodness, how do you keep it so juicy? A lot of turkey sometimes dries out. A lot of turkey gets really dry. We've actually been recognized quite a bit for our turkey as some of the best Ooh. in the state. So oh. we cook a lot of turkeys <laughs> on Thanksgiving. All okay, right, we're gonna is, give ooh, you some brisket. Yes. It's got beautiful color to it. Good, mm -hmm. I'm glad you like that. <laughs> Melt in your mouth and then that little crispiness on the yeah, outside. Yeah, a little bit of bark on the outside where you get all the flavor, the salt and pepper. Yes, yeah, so like, do y'all use any other seasonings? No, ma'am. No. Just salt and pepper. Basic Texas barbecue. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to have to get in there and get your fingers a little dirty and grab you a rib. All right. These are Ooh. our sweet tea glazed St. Louis ribs. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Your face said it all. That glaze is delicious. You don't like the rib, I can tell. Oh, really? Going back for more bites. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you always have to have something to accompany your barbecue. You do. We do everything fresh in-house, made every day. Ooh. The mac and cheese is just a recipe that I've been eating since I was a little kid. And it's one of our most popular sides, so dig in there and give that a shot. Ooh, this, this feels hearty. It, it is Ooh, very hearty, like very cheesy. Nothing extravagant, but... It's just made so well. It, it's just home-style right. mac and cheese. It really just brings it back home. Yep. I love it. Okay, I'm gonna slide this over to you. Okay. These are Kyle's green beans. Okay, and Kyle is your son. Kyle's my son, part owner of the restaurant. Okay. He's been with me since we started nine years ago as a food truck. We've been here in the restaurant for five years now. Okay. We're right next door to Floor's Country Store. They do a lot of big concerts and so forth, obviously. So a lot of people will park, come here and eat dinner, have a couple of our beers, yeah. and then go to the show. Right. Um, and then we do live music in our backyard on Saturdays from four to seven. It's all been so good. I am so happy that we came out here. Well, I'm glad to have you here. Yeah. And we hope to see you again. Bee Daddy's a Halotus favorite and now one of mine. Y'all gotta come and taste it for yourself. Up next, we have another Texas adventure coming your way. If you're looking for the full dining experience coupled with some of the best wines from all around the globe, look no further. Lubbock's La Diosa Cellars curates from the Lone Star inspired heart. Sylvia, this is my first time in Lubbock, and I am in awe of this beautiful restaurant. What was the inspiration behind La Diosa Cellars? I love to watch people come in and just watch their eyes, and they're just taking it all in. And I just wanted a place that would reflect worldly cultures, but yet, I just wanted it to feel like, like home. When it comes to entertaining and bringing guests from Lubbock, what do you want them to take away? I want them to take away that we're part of, you know, a community that embraces diversity, um, that loves culture, and, um, and that loves wine. That um, <laughs> wants you to know about the pairing of wine with food. How wonderful that is, and what an incredible experience that can be. I want more of this sangria because it's so good, and hopefully a, a spicy 
Absol dish or two. No, absolutely. We'll do, we'll do a few of our um, hallmark dishes. Good. Let's do it. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. All right. Great. Cheers. Cheers. So you have our paella, and um, our paella is inspired by the paellas that are made in Valencia, Spain. And so we have both peas and um, green beans, and you're also enjoying some Gulf shrimp. I'm also tasting a little bit of a kick. Is that the saffron? Is that a mix of the spices? You're, you're, you're tasting paprika, smoked paprika, and saffron. You mentioned earlier your guests love to pair their food with some drinks. What do we have here? Porto Tonico is the national drink of Portugal. Oh, very cool. And so if you think about gin and tonic, gin with your tonic water, what the Portuguese do is they uh, use their white port with tonic. Another very good pairing is our Le Copan Rosé. If you want to have a wine instead of yes, a and so this is an incredible, you know, dry rosé, a great equalizer, if you will. Well, it looks like we're just getting warmed up because this looks like an amazing main course. What do we have here? I hope you love lamb. Mm, I do. Awesome. Okay, so these are our lamb pops. Lamb pops. Lamb pops. Yes. Yes. Not lamb chops. Lamb, lamb pops. pops. Yes. Do I need to use utensils or can I just eat with my we hands? would prefer that you eat with your hands. Okay. Yes, you're in Texas okay. after all, right? Pretend mm. you're, you've got um, a so pork good. rib in your hand. Exactly. Or yes. 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 Very yes. tender. I love mm -hmm. this. This is very good. Sylvia, everything was delicious. The drinks, the food, the ambiance here at La Diosa Cellars. Thank you for inviting us to your wonderful home. It was totally my pleasure. Thank you so much for choosing us. Cheers. Cheers.